diamonds floating through space and time. This project is how to make a diamond lamp, a lamp full of liquid with diamonds that float in the liquid. And it came about as a happy accident when another project, a completely different and much more vulgar project, failed horribly and inspired this. And I'd like to dedicate this project in memory of my mother. Let's start this project off with the happy little accident that led to it. What I have here is an experimental glitter lamp. It's not actually glitter that's in it. It's actually sort of nail decoration type, glittery type stuff, but it's actually little dots of fluorescent colours. And the idea was that these pink, yellow, orange and blue dots would perhaps fluoresce under, fluoresce under ultraviolet light. So if I made a glitter lamp out of them and then I used a resistor in the bottom to heat it and then blue or purple or ultraviolet LEDs underneath it, then it would look like a dark glitter lamp. But in a dark room, you'd see all these bright, colourful dots of pigment floating about in it. And it seemed like a good idea until it all went wrong. You see, to work properly, a glitter lamp has to have a good balance between the glitter or the pigment, in this case, in it, and the water. And these different colours all have different weights. So the blue, the yellow and the pink is all floating at the top and the orange has all sunk right down to the bottom. And that kind of, you know, that kind of spot it a wee bit. And when I was playing about with it, I thought, just randomly, for no good reason at all, I had some... Uh, Poundland plastic diamonds and I chucked some in and they floated in the top of the liquid and I wasn't expecting that because I've always thought that the hard super clear plastics are much more dense than other types and uh, I went online and I checked the specific gravity which is the density of the plastic and I think these are acrylic and it said it was somewhere between 1.14 to 1.2 which is really low. And to put things into perspective, uh, specific gravity is the density of a liquid or material. And in this case, it determines if you match the two of them, then they'll float. They'll go to a neutral density and float about inside. If one's got a heavier density, it'll sink to the bottom. If it's got a lighter density, it'll float to the top. Water has a specific gravity of one. And uh, it's based, uh, water is used as a reference for many things like volume and uh, weight. For instance, a one litre of water will weigh exactly one kilogram. It's uh, just one of these industry standard things. And I then decided, well, if it's the acrylic's that light, uh, then perhaps I can make a lamp with these floating in it. And since it is so light, the other thing I could use, instead of using the complex chemicals that are required in glitter, perhaps table salt would work. And it did. Table salt uh, will, if you saturate a solution with table salt, it will go up to a roughly about 1.21 um, specific gravity. And that means it would happily support these crystals. As it was, I'm not sure what plastic these are, because these crystals in here balanced off around about 1.05, which is really light. So here's how you do it. Get your bottle and put some water in it. Now, I recommend using either distilled or boiled water, because uh, it makes it sterile. Although, uh, perhaps yeah, I'd recommend adding a bit of bleach as well if you, you're going to seal this up for any length of time, just to keep it from going fluffy inside. But uh, put the water in. The distilled water also, or boiled water, also has less tendency to the sort of gassiness that uh, you'll get lots of little bubbles forming and things until it's all sort of outgassed, as tap water would do. And... Put your water in, add your acrylic diamonds. The thing about the acrylic diamonds, uh, I've tried making this type of lamp with beads in the past and it didn't work because if you uh, look very closely at the sort of plastic beads, if you had a plastic bead, you'll see it actually inside. It's got little tiny bubbles of air inside it. It's very hard to get them optically clear. I do not know how they do it with these. They're incredible. And that's part of the magic of why these balance so well. It is because they are so pure. But uh, you add your diamonds uh, and add salt and shake it up a bit. Now, initially, the diamonds will kind of tend to float. And the reason for that is that if this is your diamond, then initially when you put it in, because it was dry, it will tend to have 
tiny little invisible air bubbles just sitting on the surface. They wouldn't be visible to look at. If you looked at it through a, a magnifying glass, you'd see them. But over time, they will gradually just sit apart, company, and the, the water will mate on, and then it will sort of, you'd, the crystals would naturally sink to the bottom in the water. Add salt and shake it up until uh, you get neutral buoyancy. That's the point at which the diamonds are tending to float, uh, either hover in the middle or float to the top. But note that because this is heated by a lamp, uh, traditionally, uh, this is a, a base of a glitter lamp. And that's what this, uh, plas this bottle's out of. Um, I just decided since I had an empty bottle and a base, I'd just reuse them. It's worth mentioning that I bought this for my mother a long time ago, and my dad disapproved of it. He, he thought all electrical appliances were going to explode and burst into flames, and to be honest, in the early days of electricity, televisions and things did explode and burst into flames, and strangely, having gone through all the reliable electronics, we're now back in an era when USB power supplies from unsavoury sellers are also likely to explode and burst into flames. Lovely. So we've come full circle. But my dad, to render this safe, cut the flex off it. That's why it's got a very short flex now. And he also opened the glitter bottle and poured the contents away. I'm not sure why he did that. I think he must have presumed it was going to be petrol or gasoline inside. He did things like that. He just had this weird perspective on anything I brought into the house, it was obviously going to be dangerous. And to be fair, a lot of what I do bring into the house is probably quite dangerous. Uh, what you're going to do then is you're going to add salt and balance it off. You can either, if you add too much salt and they're floating at the top, you can add a bit of water to actually rebalance it. And it really helps to do this in a plastic drinks bottle first, a, a larger plastic drinks bottle than this just because it gives you more space to keep adding a bit of salt or adding a bit of water and shake it and then leave it. Another thing you may find useful is a drop or two of dishwashing liquid just to break the surface tension uh, and get those bubbles off and stop the crystals clumping together. It may or may not be needed. You're aiming for a slight tendency of the crystals to go to the top of the bottle when it's cold because... When you heat the water up in the bottle, and you're not heating it up very hot, the lamp in that particular one is 15 watts. Uh, you can use up to about 25 watts with these ones. LED lamps, not so great because they're not very hot, although you can, if you get completely super accurate balance, you can make these that operate with LED lamps very slowly, which looks nice because the sharp points of light from some LED lamps creates a nice pattern around the room. However, uh, if the bottle was filled up to this height with water and then you turn the lamp on underneath it and it heats the bottle up, uh, you will then find that the height of the water actually increases because as the liquid heats up, it expands. And as it expands, its density goes down. And depending on the density, how the density of these crystals changes, you may find that the, the crystals then all sink to the bottom and just sort of hang about the bottom of it. If that happens, add a little bit more salt and just keep nudging, you know, just fine tune it until they're just perfect. And when the water is fully up to temperature, all the crystals are just swirling about inside. It does mean that when you turn it on, initially all those crystals will be sitting at the top. And apart from giving it a shake, it sometimes takes a while for the temperature to go up high, and, you know, for the lamp to heat the liquid up fully before they start moving completely. But it's just a matter of patience, really. It's all down to patience. While I'm looking at the subject of these things, now, is there anything I should mention? Yes, oh, there is. I recommend using a cork. The reason I recommend using the cork is that, whereas in this one I've actually used a crown cap, um, this one is su such a safe solution. It's, it's really just salty water. that There is a possibility that, well, you could add bleach, I suppose, to keep it sterile. But there is that slight possibility of, you know, pressure building up inside the bottle. And if you put it on too high a pressure... Uh, higher temperature lamp, that could also result in high pressure. If you use a cork, it will simply pop out and that just makes it a lot safer. This, on the other hand, <coughs> because that, that's fundamentally it, that's how you make your, uh, your crystal lamp. You get your... Uh, did I mention where these came from? I think I did. Table scatter. I think I mentioned that they were table scatter for weddings. Um, just decorative crystals that you 
basically, as part of the decorations, you just scatter all over the tablecloth and it just looks, it gives it that sort of air of sophistication because, like, diamonds everywhere sort of thing like that. And this is good because uh, it means that we've got them for making our, our lamps with. <clears throat> Very easy to get hold of. Table scatter. The glitter uh, in this lamp is polyester based. A lot of the glitters are polyester based. And this is a really dense plastic. This is around about 1.4 specific gravity. Uh, this one is from an uh, eBay seller called Twisty Denvy. And this one is from a theatre equipment supplier called Roscoe. The Roscoe stuff is just incredibly fine sparkly. It's really quite amazing. It, it almost looks like granular mercury, although it's obviously not mercury. This stuff is notable, the Twisted Envy stuff, in that it's designed for nail decoration for ladies, or some men, I'm guessing, as well. And as such, it's got a coating on the aluminium to protect it, and that's good because... To get that heavy glitter to float in liquids like this, you have to use uh, chemicals in it to make it very high gravity. This actually weighs a lot. If I pick this one up, it feels light compared to this one, even though they're very similar bottles. And to get this to float, I've actually used a very saturated solution of calcium nitrate. And uh, you can, with some glitters, use calcium chloride. Calcium chloride is most frequently found in these wardrobe dehumidifiers, which uh, basically have crystals uh, of the calcium chloride. And as it absorbs water from the air, it's very hygroscopic. It sucks water in. <coughs> it basically turns to liquid and goes into the bottom. Not terribly efficient as dehumidifiers, but a great source of calcium chloride, although very impure. You have to filter it out very well. Because these are illuminated, any light... Uh, Reflecting particles in the water will make it look cloudy, so you have to be quite careful to get extra pure chemicals. Uh, calcium chloride could be used, but only suits some very light glitters, certain plastics. Calcium nitrate uh, is a very, very heavy solution. I think it's used in the commercial glitter lamps. I've never found that out uh, for sure. I don't know if they use some secret chemical. This is where uh, having the lab facilities to actually put a tiny little sample in and analyse the constituents would be quite handy. But uh, yeah, this is a uh, using that standard uh, coated glitter, which protects it from the uh, fairly concentrated salts around it. I found with uh, certain other, with this is uncoated, the Roscoe stuff, and I found that uh, with some of the chemicals you use, it starts off looking great, and then you you leave it for maybe a few weeks or a month, and then you go back and look at it and think it's not very sparkly. And then you realise that it's not glitter that's floating about anymore, it's just little plastic flakes because all the metal has been eaten off. In this case, though, the calcium nitrate and that uh, protected glitter with the coating on it uh, has lasted well. It's a, it's a very good glitter lamp. It's very nice. This is specifically balanced and near perfect balance for use with LED lamps because the fine particles and the perfect balance means that even a 3 watt LED uh, GU10 lamp will actually make this move at a modest pace and it's quite nice because the if you use the lamps with the 3 1 watt emitters in them it sparkles light all around the room as well it's very very attractive <clears throat> but that's more or less it I think that's just about everything so um, it's a lovely effect. It, it really does look nice with these sort of crystals floating about in the water. I don't know the long-term stability of the plastic in liquid, though. Some plastics gradually cloud over time. I'm not sure if that's going to happen with these or not. But uh, having said that, it will still give the effect. And you can always change out the crystals if need to be. But uh, yeah, it's lovely. It's a very, very nice lamp. It came together so quickly and worked so well. That, that rarely happens. It's... Uh, Odd when something just uh, comes together so well as this one did. So there we have it, uh, making your own diamond lamps. And I'm going to finish this video off just with a short uh, section of video just showing this particular lamp just running in the background. <laughs> 